Hello, my name is Jake Romer, and today we're going to be demonstrating how to complete a number one brake test with the use of a yard banjo. There's two reasons why we're shooting this video today. The first part, it's a regulatory requirement that our employees understand how to complete a number one brake test properly. And the number second reason is to reduce service interruptions on the road. I'm going to show you a bit about the machine here, and then we're going to demonstrate how to complete a number one brake test. So the first part, this is your number one lever, your fast charge. That's your number two, your slow release, and your number three, setting the brakes. On the back side of the banjo, you'll notice a sticker. That's for qualification. That sticker has to be within date of 92 days. On the front side, you'll notice the longer part of the banjo. This is the part where your yard air is going to come in, and on the shorter side, it's going to go towards the cars. So let me demonstrate how we're going to be completing this number one today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ensure our yard air is blown out. The reason we're doing that is we don't want to introduce any moisture into the braking system. This is very loud, so for safety's sakes, we're going to put in some earplugs. So once you know everybody's clear, you're going to make sure that you point this away from anybody and you're going to crack that valve all the way open to ensure all that moisture comes out of the train line. Once you're sure that the moisture is out, we're going to hook it up to the yard test plant. So prior to chart turning on the yard air source, we want to make sure that the number one and two are closed. When you do turn this valve on, you have to ensure that you have no air leaks and all your fittings are tight. You're dealing with a lot of pressure here, which has a potential to cause injury. So I'm going to turn on my number one valve right now and we're going to start the charging process. So our cars have been coupled up. We've been charging for a while, now we're going to put on a tail end gauge. Tail end gauge has to be qualified every 92 days as well, and that's going to tell us our gradient pressure, and we have to be within 15 psi of our supply. So now that my train has been charged, we're going to shut off the main valve and we're going to reduce it 15 pounds. Once we've reduced it 15 pounds, we're going to wait a minute for the train to stabilize. Now that we've waited a minute, we're going to document our pressure and we're going to wait another minute and we'll take our pressure reading once again and we'll note the difference and that'll be our leakage. We're allowed 5 psi, but preferably we'd like zero. That minute's passed. I've noted that we've had two pounds of leakage. So now we're going to reduce another 8 pounds to make 25 pounds. If there's any more than 5 pounds, we need to look at the train, we need to go fix the air leaks. So now we've reduced it 25 pounds, 
we'll walk the train and we'll uh, check our brakes. So now that I've completed the setup, where I visually inspected all the brake rigging and the pistons, I'm going to release our brakes. I'm going to release the brakes by the number two valve, and this mimics the same release rate as a locomotive engine. Now I'm going to go look at the release. Now that we've successfully completed our number one brake test, we're going to disconnect the yard banjo.